Dans son plan pour l'Écosse, le White Paper, le CNP, le parti national écossais, fait part de sa volonté de garder le pound. L'Écosse ferait alors partie d'une union monétaire avec le reste du Royaume-Uni et partagerait la livre sterling. We advocate a, a currency union uh, because it, uh, we think, is in the best interest of, of Scotland and the rest of the UK. Scotland is the second biggest export market for England. Uh, England exports more into Scotland every year than it does to uh, South Africa, Brazil, India, China put together. And of course, England is our biggest export market. So to avoid the complexities and the inconvenience of transaction costs, uh, pour nos entreprises, faire du business dans les deux directions, c'est une option qui fait sens. Mais cette option ne fait pas sens pour tout le monde. En février 2014, le ministre des Finances britannique, George Osborne, est venu à Édimbourg prononcer un discours. Il a alors affirmé que si les Écossais deviennent indépendants, ils ne pourront pas garder la livre. Premièrement, le SNP dit que c'est autant de pounds de Scotland que le reste du the UK. Ils sont comme like the angry party to a messy divorce. But the pound isn't an asset to be divided up between two countries after a breakup as if it were a CD collection. If Scotland walks away from the UK, it walks away from the UK pound. Mais pour les partisans de l'indépendance, le refus de partager le pound est un coup de bluff. Il dénonce une manœuvre politique visant à effrayer les écossais. They are bluffing. It's as much our pound as it is the rest of the UK, you know, and that's been the case uh, for hundreds of years. So actually, are they within their rights? It's somewhat hectoring. No, you can't carry on using your pound. And it, it was interesting that how uh, I think that it will backfire on them. We uh, saw various polls after George Osborne made his announcement that actually increased the yes vote because people felt that it was ill-advised and really somewhat patronising to fly up here and say you can't continue to use your pound. Mais pour certains économistes, le gouvernement de David Cameron ne bluffe pas. Il est tout à fait capable de refuser une union monétaire. My view is that they are not bluffing. My view is that they, I mean, that's one area of certainty that they have given, and that is that there won't be a currency union. Now, you know, my, my political science colleagues would say that anything can happen in a negotiation. They don't wind up being technical decisions, they wind up being political decisions. But the reality is, even when you look at the politics, all three parties have, have made a claim that there would not be a currency union. You know, there's been some very good research done on why a currency union might not be within the rest of the UK's interest from a technical perspective either. Uh, and that has to do predominantly with, and we've, this is part of the issue that's, that's been plaguing Europe now since 2008, if you don't have a monetary union with a fiscal union, they just create all kinds of different challenges. Alors, refuser une union monétaire, est-ce un coup de bluff Toujours est-il que faire partie d'une union monétaire sans politique fiscale commune créerait pas mal de difficultés. If Scotland were to use the pound as it currently does, but then would be the currency of a separate country, well that would limit many of the options that an independent Scotland would have. You're then facing the intriguing paradox that Scotland could vote for independence And if it was in a monetary union with the rest of the UK, with very, very tight stipulations around their own fiscal policy, but whether it could potentially be less independent than it currently is within the EU, within the UK. Mais c'est vrai qu'en cas d'union monétaire, l'Écosse serait alors dépendante de la banque d'Angleterre, non Ouais, c'est sûr. Enfin, ce que disent les partisans du Yes, c'est que dans une économie mondiale, il y a toujours des interdépendances. All communities, all nations have a level of interdependence. The only one that doesn't is North Korea, and we're certainly not talking about being North Korea. Uh, what you're doing is you're trading a level of financial sovereignty and uh, using that for best effect. So what people don't realise is that the amount of control that the Scottish government will still continue to have, and particularly the amount of tax take that it will now newly have on national insurance, VAT, corporation tax, uh, the North Sea oil, gas and oil revenues and so on. These are massive and these are significant. And in terms of affecting policy de decisions to favour Scotland, uh, they will still be significant.
Mais si quelque chose se passe mal, en cas de crise par exemple If something went wrong with a Scottish bank, then the central bank that would have to go in and support it, well, that would be the central bank of another country, and that would depend on another country. And as we've seen in Europe, banks are not the only thing that occasionally need to be supported. Sometimes governments need to be supported. So as we've seen, the ECB has actually had to commit to buying government debt in European countries. Well, suppose that a similar event in the future were to happen in Scotland, would the Bank of England, which is acting on behalf of taxpayers of the rest of the United Kingdom, would they be obliged to do this for what is now a sovereign country? Moi, bon, je me disais, euh, si le Royaume-Uni refuse effectivement de partager le pain avec l'Écosse, est-ce que l'Écosse ne pourrait pas continuer à utiliser la livre sterling sans l'autorisation du Royaume-Uni Un peu comme euh, le Panama qui utilise le dollar. Si la Scotland a décidé qu'ils allaient utiliser le pound, ils pouvaient utiliser le pound. Si la Scotland a décidé qu'ils voulaient utiliser des cannes de tenants pour travailler avec, ils pouvaient faire ça aussi, des cannes de bière. Ils peuvent utiliser ce qu'ils veulent. Mais le problème vient en fait que vous devez imprimer de l'argent. You have to print the physical money, and the physical money wears out very, very quickly. And so if Scotland wasn't licensed somehow to print money or they couldn't access money from the rest of the UK, it would be very, very challenging. Ou alors, l'Écosse pourrait avoir sa propre monnaie, comme le propose le Parti écologiste. C'est vrai qu'on parle toujours du plan du SNP, parce que c'est le parti qui veut voir une Écosse indépendante, mais il existe d'autres solutions. Scotland having a new currency... It's interesting when we look around the world, there's many countries of Scotland's size, uh, level of wealth in terms of per capita GDP, for instance, which function very well indeed. And there's nothing to say that an independent Scotland couldn't do that. One of the features of almost all of those countries you can name is they have their own currency. So, for example, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Scotland having its own currency, which can then be adjusted based on the things that are important for the Scottish economy, which are very different from the things that are important from the rest of the UK economy. It may be that that would be of greater benefit to Scotland than, than either the euro or some arrangement with the, with the pound sterling. But there's something that I don't understand. Nobody seems to think of the euro as a valid solution. After all, why not the euro? Ouais, enfin, il faut dire que l'euro n'est pas très très populaire au Royaume-Uni. Et puis, la crise de l'eurozone en 2008 n'a rien arrangé à la situation. Mais bon, tu sais, les partisans du Yes ne sont pas contre la possibilité de rejoindre l'euro un jour. Well, at the moment, so to to be eligible to join the euro, there's a process that you need to go through. So you need to actually have your own currency, and you need to meet various economic criteria. Uh, and on none of those measures would Scotland qualify. It's not even a possibility at the moment. That doesn't mean to say, though, that it might not be a possibility in the future. So, for example, Ireland used sterling for about 60, 70 years before it subsequently joined the euro. So who knows? 